What's happening in Ukraine is a rerun of the 20th century. The conflict is in Europe. If war breaks out, it will be in Europe. Yet the whole world could possibly get sucked into this conflict. We saw indications of this in Melbourne. We're talking about the Quad Summit. The Quad foreign ministers met for the second time in Australia this time. They did discuss the standoff in Ukraine, but the joint statement does not mention the standoff. The words Ukraine or Russia do not feature in the joint statement. Having said that, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken did draw parallels. Europe or the Pacific, coercion is the same, he said. Uh, Russia's uh, ongoing threat to Ukraine uh, and the support some countries have expressed for Moscow's dangerous actions is just the latest example of how these rules are being challenged and it underscores why we have to stand together to defend them. What about the other Quad members? Australia and Japan did join the American chorus. Both countries, remember, have openly sided with the U.S. on this in the past. Canberra had threatened sanctions against Russia and Japan's parliament had condemned Russian aggression in this region. Today was an extension of that policy. Here's what Australia's foreign minister said. Uh, where we see the sort of statement that was issued by the presidents uh, after their bilateral meeting, uh, it is concerning because it doesn't present a, or represent a, a global order uh, that squares with uh, those ambitions for freedom and openness uh, and sovereignty and the protection of territorial integrity. Japan too said the same. But the big focus was on India. New Delhi has decades-long ties with Russia. Recently, it has moved closer to the US. So the question was, would India join the anti-Russia chorus? Well, even before that meeting started, Foreign Minister of India, S. Jay Shankar, set the record straight. And Dr. Jay Shankar, can I please ask you, sir, what's India's current view of Russia's actions in Ukraine? And do you believe that Russia has behaved appropriately? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, this meeting is focused on the Indo-Pacific, so I think you should figure out the geography there. Uh, and where we stand, uh, our position on Ukraine, we have laid it out in public at the UN Security Council. Frankly, the meeting went as expected. America pushed to discuss Russia, Australia and Japan agreed, and India remained reluctant. The good news for New Delhi is this. The joint statement does not mention Russia or Ukraine. And that's something that India wanted. So what does it mention? Well, vaccines, supply chain, terrorism, and China. On vaccines, all eyes were on progress. Last year, the Quad pledged to donate 1.3 billion doses globally. 500 million of them have been donated so far. The target is to deliver 1 billion vaccines by the end of this year, 2022. On terror, there were some specific commitments that were made. The Quad leaders condemned all kind of terrorism and violent extremism. The Mumbai 2611 attacks and the Pathan court attack were mentioned separately. On China, the Quad stuck to the same position like it always has. It called for an open and free Indo-Pacific, no coercion, no piracy, no illegal claims. They were clearly targeting Beijing. But in typical Quad fashion, Beijing was not named. In fact, only two countries were named in the joint statement today. Myanmar and North Korea, easy target, some could say. The Quad called for a swift return to democracy in Myanmar. And on North Korea, Kim Jong-un's missile tests were condemned. So that's standard policy. Another key focus was ASEAN. The Quad leaders pledged, quote unquote, unwavering support to ASEAN nations. And this is important. This is part of the Quad's larger Indo-Pacific policy. Joe Biden is planning to host the ASEAN leaders in Washington, D.C. Clearly, the Quad sees ASEAN as a key to the Indo-Pacific, whether it's resolving the crisis in Myanmar, checking Chinese aggression, or supporting smaller littoral states. ASEAN has the clout and the will. Well, here's what they don't have the money and the military, both of which the Quad nations have in abundance. So it's a good match. By steering clear of Russia, the Quad made the right call, you could say. Just think about it. The U.S. has 28 NATO allies in Europe, 28. 28 nations willing to defend American interests in this continent. Why should Pacific nations get involved in this conflict? The Quad works because it is focused on one region, and that is the Indo-Pacific. If America tries to drag the Pacific into its European conflicts, it would be playing into China's hands. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.